Hello, my name is Karen Phillip and I'm the director of the Caves Beach Early Learning Centre. I put up a video about a week ago regarding our pending uh, assessment and just putting it up now to say we've had it. It was conducted yesterday. We had two assessors, uh, one was Robert Barbara who was from Sydney and one was Patricia Curran or Trish Curran from the Newcastle office. Uh, the assessment actually went better than I expected. Now, the things that I'd, I'd like to let you know, particularly if you're a director watching this or even an educator, is to get a pad and pen and just jot down some points because we sort of ran blind. Even though I'd spoken to a lot of directors who had been through the, assess the assessment process, it was still very much an unknown. And I really wished someone had been able to tell me prior to our assessment yesterday of what was actually going to happen, what they wanted to see, what they were looking at and how it was going to go down. So that's what I want to do today to let you know, to take a little bit of the fear away. The first thing I did was the day before the assessment, which was on the Thursday night, I texted all my staff just to suggest to them that they just relax down and that in fact don't look at the assessment as them coming in critiquing us. I said to them that this is our opportunity to show them how good we are. And a lot of them took that on board and utilised that and felt much more comfortable with the process. Obviously there was still some fear, a fear factor going on, but they did feel a lot more comfortable. So may I suggest any directors with the assessment coming up, just drop your staff a, a quick text to let them know that it is their opportunity to show how good they are rather than thinking that it's the assessors coming in critiquing and picking us to pieces, which most of us believe happens anyway. Now one of the first things that uh, I feel it's important, and I actually got this from Centre Support, was to introduce the assessors to all of the staff, the children and the parents. Now I ensured that the assessors were not to arrive before 9am, that was my specifics. They said originally eight, I said no, nine o'clock. I didn't want them around with staff arriving, lots of the children arriving between the eight and nine a.m. So I just said no, they will actually get here at nine a.m. And that was agreed to, and it worked much better than them arriving early. So if you can, or if it suits your service, have them come in at nine when most of the children are there, the staff are there, and everyone is ready for their day. Um, I welcomed them to the centre, I showed them around uh, where the things like staff room and toilets, tea and coffee was, that sort of thing. Then I showed them through the rooms. I did point out <laughs> that we were very nervous, that we were very sceptical and we'd heard some quite horrific stories about some of the assessment processes and I was really hoping that these two people were going to be professional and conduct themselves in the manner in which we believed the assessment should have been conducted, which was fair, which was also a big part of them asking questions and giving us the opportunities to explain to them the reason we did things the way we did them. And that was probably in the first oh, 20 seconds of them arriving. And I think that really, really helped. I checked their ID, uh, made them sign in. They also had to sign out at lunchtime, sign back in. And I know some um, assessors have deliberately not chosen to sign in to see if the director will pull them up and of course if they don't or if we're a little bit worried or anxious then that's an automatic markdown so please remember to get them to sign in just leave the book there i also then on the front of our our booklet that um where the signing sheet is i have it printed that where our exits are where the um the area is that where we meet in case of fire or emergency and also where the fire extinguishers are they really liked that. So I made sure after they'd signed in, I picked it up and I actually read it to them, showed it to them so they could read it themselves and completely understand the safety requirements of our service. Now, after I showed them around the centre, I then introduced them individually to all the staff. I also then went up to little groups of children and said, hi, you know, this is Robert. And, and I asked them, of course, how they wanted to be referred. Rob, Robert, Bob, no, Robert, and Patricia, what she preferred, Trish, great. So make sure you get that. Nothing worse than upsetting a person by using their name in a way that they don't like. 
So I clarified that. Then I would introduce them to the children. Oh, look, this, this lady and man, Robert and Trish, are going to have a look today and see how clever you guys are. And they're gonna watch everything you do. They could be inside, they could be outside, but they're just gonna watch. And if you see them writing notes, they're probably writing down how really clever you are today. So I really wanted to make sure that the children felt comfortable and weren't, you know, weren't concerned and skeptical of who these people were. That's another very important point for directors. Um, one of the ACOs took photos of all the rooms, went in and, you know, happy snapped everything, particularly in the foyer area to make sure that we had all our displays up that are listed. Uh, most everyone, I should imagine, would, so they're going to do that. The other ACO remained outside observing, and he did that for probably uh, six out of eight hours, or maybe even seven out of eight hours. He, that, the guy that was outside, he interviewed the uh, educator, the, our, our educational leader in regards to program, and while the other lady was happy snapping everywhere, while Trish was taking all the photos. Then they seemed to swap over and she came in at about um, 10.30, 11 o'clock to start going through quality area six and seven. Uh, when Robert was outside, when um, Trish was doing the happy snaps, he was quite vigilant on checking first aid kits that were outside and the bins, just to make sure that we had appropriate first aid outside. And all we do is we just keep it in a little ice cream container. It's not locked or anything, it's not anything official, but just, in, you know, band-aids, gloves, uh, dressings, those sorts of things, just outside in a little box. So it's very important that you have a, a little outside kit as well. He then checked the uh, the rooms, which was fine for first aid kits. Um, when he went in with my educational leader to discuss the, the format of programming, because I'm not in the rooms all the time, I sent my 2IC, another room leader, in with her. I didn't want her to go in by herself, just the educational leader and the assessor, because I knew she was a little bit apprehensive and tense. So I thought, okay, I'll send both of them in. Assessors were fine with that. That took whoa, close to two hours, hour and a half at least, to hour 45 minutes. And what they went through was um, how we program. They went through how we program for individual children as well as for groups of children. How we work with parents' goals. We have a form that we send out in our enrolment. We actually send it out every year giving them all their, getting personal information and also asking the parents what their goals are for their children. So he was, he was asking how we work in with the individual goals that parents want for their children. He asked about the educational leader's role and wanted her to explain that uh, in regards to meetings that she may have with staff and also how she mentors other staff. Um, he asked how they do uh, cultural diversity and cultural experiences with the children, uh, and, and a lot about how the program and the reflections work. Now, our educational leader and our 2IC was very happy with the way that went down. And of course, the assessor indicated terrific, but I think they will indicate that to everybody, and then we'll find out what happens when they actually write up the report and give us a rating. They were very proactive, obviously, on observing the interactions between the staff, between the staff and the children, and also between the staff and the parents. So we all need to be quite vigilant with those on the day. They were very, um, very proactive on observing lunches, particularly the morning tea. Hygiene was a big thing. And also how we prepared the lunches, how we enticed the children, made sure their hands were washed, etc, etc, put out the beds, uh, settled the children down after lunch, what we did with children that weren't going to sleep in the two to three room, where do you go with them, what do you do, all of those sorts of things. Now we did have an extra staff member in each room, so we had three additional staff members in our, in our rooms, we have three rooms. The reason we did that is because I had already planned on pulling two staff off the floor, the education leader and another staff member off the floor anyway. And then I wanted another staff member to ensure that the toilets were policed diligently. Now, we would exchange staff every hour, so it didn't look too obvious. And the staff ensured that the children had no problem going to the bathroom while we sort of looked away to give them privacy. And then to ensure that they flushed the toilet and they washed their hands and they dried them before leaving the bathroom. Because that is a very important point. 
Uh, even for the older children, the five-year-olds, we still had a staff member stand there just to gently remind them. Um, when the Quality Area 6 was going through, um, Patricia Trish came in and asked me to go into the office with her. I then brought my 2IC in, the one who'd also been with my educational leader, so she came in. So the both of us sat there with her and she was fine with that. Now, it took around two and a half hours to go through Quality Area 6. Insanely ridiculous time. I would suggest it probably could have been done in one hour or less, but obviously it's the way she worked. She went over a lot of tangents and discussed about a whole range of different things, other centres, other assessors, which took a lot of time, which I would have preferred just to get straight into it. But the things that she was very interested in was our enrolment process and our enrolment forms. Of course, this includes induction. She spent a lot of time speaking about this. She also asked me to email through to her our parent information handbook and our enrolment form and our child information form. Now, she was obviously very good in sustainability and didn't want us to be printing all these things out. And I did say to her that we don't print out forms anymore just in, in, in case a, a a parent doesn't have an email, which generally doesn't happen these days. But we were very reluctant in actually printing anything out for her. I asked if I could simply email it to her. And she agreed and said, yes, yes, that's much better, etc. So we did that. Um, she wanted to know what we gave uh, families. Copies of medical conditions policy was a very big one. So I've got to send that on to her on Monday. She wanted to know how we got parent involved in the centre and how we entice them to be interested in the centre. We explained that we have newsletters, that we have parent meetings once or twice a year, and I now have to send her through all of those documents from probably, well not all of them, probably two or three um, uh, newsletters over, we did a couple, one, la one this year and one or two last year I think it was, so she wants to see those. And, um, and the emails that I have sent parents over the last year or two on enticing parents to come into the centre with any areas of expertise. She spent a long time speak, speaking about this. What sort of parents we have, what can they do when they come in, what do they show the children, how do we involve them within the centre. So that was a big one, make a note of that. Also quite big on child protection. She did ask a lot of the staff about child protection and the, um, the child protection tree and what they would do and ask for scenarios, etc. Uh, as I say, Quality Area of Six went for a very long time, really long time. And then we had a break for lunch, uh, then they came back and we thought we should be just about done, but then they spent, she spent another hour going through it yet again. But that was all right. Uh, we covered different areas and she would back and forth in her Quality Area points to put one part in Quality Area 2, then would go back over to 6, and then would maybe pop into Quality Area 7 and then back to 6. So it was a little bit all over the place but I'm presuming that's the way they have to work. When they were walking around with the staff, particularly Robert, he again asked about child protection. He asked about the, the sustainability in each room, how we did it, uh, asked about the recycling. We have a worm farm, we have plants. Because we have all soft fallen pavers, we have no natural area in our yard because the owners will not permit us to rip up soft fall after it cost them many tens of thousands of dollars maybe five or six years ago when the government decided, no, we don't want grass anymore, we want all soft fall. So they went through that and now we're saying, now they don't want all soft fall, they want grass and they're going, no. So we have to abide by them. We explained that to the assessors. They understood and accepted that, at least to our face. And we showed them where the plants were and where the worm farm was and they seemed reasonably happy with that, but that's yet to be seen. Uh, they asked us about information that we give to families, uh, how we speak with the families, what we speak about. They were very interested in how the children transitioned from room to room. We explained that uh, when a child is ready to go up, they turn two or they are ready to go to the preschool room. We put them up for approximately two hours each time they come in one week. Then the second week, we go for three hours. The third week we then have the morning and the lunch and then the fourth week they transition up and so it's a smooth transition. She asked about how the parents were informed of that so we explained to her that we spoke to the parents 
uh, how we offered them to, you know, sort of be involved to meet the teachers in the new room and so on and so, so forth. So they did like that. Um, they also asked about transitions into the schools and the, the communication we have with our local schools. Now, while that may have been slightly embellished a bit, we do have a good relationship with our schools. We have them come in and, and do performances for us. We have work experience students from the local high school. And we do speak to the principal and the school counsellors uh, at least once a year towards the end of the year, around about September, October, in regards to the children that are progressing into each of the schools. So we advise them that we dealt with uh, six local, local primary schools and they seemed quite happy with that. Now, they basically sat there and just looked at what the staff did, wrote copious amounts of notes. The staff were obviously a little bit on edge being critiqued so closely, but they managed and they coped incredibly well. Uh, after Quality Area 6 came Quality Area 7, the management of the service. They asked me questions, she, Patricia, I beg your pardon, asked me a number of questions and my 2IC, Connie, was also asked a number of questions. We worked in tandem. Sometimes she would start a sentence and I would finish off with the rest of the information and vice versa. So we really wanted to show them how we worked in unison and how we were very supportive and both worked as part of a team. And that was also very important. And I could really strongly suggest that neither the director nor the education leader ever be in solo with an assessor. I feel it's important not only for the staff member, but also to show how the staff do work in together. And I do believe the assessors like that a lot. They spoke a lot on staff inductions, our, uh, our package that we give new staff. They wanted to see that. Again, she's asked me to email all the information through. There's about seven or eight sheets, all except for the tax declaration, which I have to put on the email that we also provide the staff member. Um, she went through and checked each and every individual file of every staff member at the centre. Now, what they're looking for is their uh, qualifications. Asthma, anaphylaxis, first aid. They're looking for their transcripts, not the diploma, or the Certificate 3, they look at only the transcripts. And I may also suggest if you have any, uh, any people doing their education degree, their diploma perhaps, and doing that, make sure you get their transcripts every six months, minimum every year, because that's what they're after, the latest and up-to-date one. We did have a couple of Certificate 3s, uh, the, the certificate, but without the transcripts, the staff were supposed to put them in but they got a little bit confused when we said we need your qualifications and transcripts etc they thought just the, the just the sheet saying certificate three was adequate that wasn't adequate so again on monday morning luckily we've been given the opportunity to send through an email to them letting them know which staff members we actually have been able to get their full transcripts they indicated that they would be happy to mark that off as um as identified and received even though they don't require us to actually send it through. So that's a, that's a big one. So you need their qualifications, their working with children check, their letter if they're a certified supervisor, and what's important is, is the staff's letter of acceptance of their certified supervisor um, application. The same as the educational leader, you must have a letter from the educational leader, well, not even a letter, ours is about that we just top right on it that I accept the position of certified supervisor or educational leader, name, signed, dated, bang, it's in there. It's about that wide A4 piece of paper width and that's all we need and they were happy with that. So I did the same thing about five times, cut them up, write the person's name on it, they signed it, went in their file, they were fine with that. So the education leader and the certified supervisors must accept that role, otherwise they're not happy with you. So they're the, they're the things that you need for each and every staff member. They, uh, they didn't look at the duty statements, which was surprising. They actually didn't really even look at our roster. They looked at our sign-on sheets because I brought it up to them. Do you want to see that? It was like, oh, yes, we have to see that. They didn't see the actual roster, but they did see the sign-on sheets. They didn't have a real close look at it. They didn't ensure anything about whether we had enough teachers, which we do every day, whether half of our staff were working towards their diploma or had a diploma. 
they just didn't do any of that. We were all completely covered, but they didn't ask any of that, which I thought was a, a little bit strange, but probably good. Uh, they asked to see and for us to send through because she didn't want to go through it on the day. She ran out of time. Uh, an attrition policy, our enrolment policy, our staff policy, our programming policy, and our medical policy. So I need to send all of those through to her um, on Monday morning. They, she was very vigilant again on checking the enrolment forms, on the accident forms. She, they did actually point out that our accident forms were no longer completely compliant. My comeback was, which is accurate, that about a year ago, we had a spot check, assessors came in, they looked at our accident form and said, oh, not completely compliant. So we worked with them and made it compliant under their direction. We did everything that we were told. I even had the original sheet there that I made changes on that the, um, uh, the spot check assessor advised us of, and that was wrong. It was just all completely wrong. So they accepted that, and uh, cause I even showed them the sign on sheet of when the, um, the, the workers did come in from the department. These were the workers, these are the people that told us to do this. That's my notes of what I changed. This is what was supposed to be acceptable and now you're telling me that in fact they were wrong giving us this information. So they accepted that and gave me the opportunity, they said, to make those changes and I would then again email it through to them so they could see that our medical, uh, sorry, our, our accident form was in fact compliant. So I, I really appreciated that. It was, um, they were there from 9am, they left at 5, I ensured they left at 5, even though we were open till 5.45. Uh, around about 20 minutes to go, the Patricia was going through each and every staff member file extremely slowly. So I knew Robert was out the back simply observing still. So I just suggested to Trish, how about if I just jump in and grab Robert? And we go through, say, eight of the staff. You've still got another six to do, because you'd only done one or two in about 40 minutes. Uh, and she said, yeah, that's okay. So I went out and asked Robert to come in. We sat in, to, in the staff room, and we got through our uh, eight staff files in seven minutes. And it took the, uh, the other assessor another 15 minutes to go through those six. So it does depend on the assessor how fast they work, how efficient they are, but to also a decree, I would open the, I go, there's that one, there's that one, there's that one, there's that one, mark it off, that's the date's done. Next one, here it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, working with children check, the letter of acceptance, their qualification, their transcript, their first aid, etc. file done. So it took one minute, pretty or less, to go through each and every file, rather than five to seven minutes per file that the other assessor was doing. So if you're running short of time, and I really wanted to be gone, and I wanted my staff just to go, and I actually sent them off anyway. One staff member left, it was only after, I think there was two children out there, and my husband, who's a primary school teacher, and myself was still there, with the doors open, in the room. Because it had been a long day for everybody, we, uh, we all met at the pub after it, and uh, yeah, had a few celebratory drinks, because it was over and done. So that's basically what they want, in an assessment. Now, all I can suggest is that if any of you have any concerns or I've gone through it a little fast, perhaps, but I don't want to take too long, please give me a ring at the Caves Beach Early Learning Centre. I'm there not every day. Uh, I'm there many days, but um, you can give me a ring there. It's a 02 number, 49715544. So if you need any sort of additional support, if you need to clarify anything with me or any questions, please give me a call. The other thing that we had that I forgot to bring home with me, we got from, um, from Matt, was those sort of little tags, I think they call them. And we printed them out, I, I sort of did a, a copy and paste, and we just had quality area one, so 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 1.1.2, 1 1.1.3, all the section ones on one sheet of paper, twos, threes, all the way through to six and seven. Every staff member got a copy of those, they folded them up, they put them in their pocket, and they were ready for any question that was going to be fired at them in regards to a quality area. They just took a moment, they looked at the sheets, turned it over to quality area three or four, whatever they were asked about, they read the quality area that they were speaking about so they were clear, and they were able to respond appropriately. 
and that made the staff also feel more comfortable and confident that they weren't going to be asked something tricky and they couldn't answer because they couldn't get their head around which quality area, what are they talking about. So I could highly suggest everyone utilise those, um, those quality area points that Matt does send out to you because they were very, very helpful. Only two staff, I think it was, used those, but that's okay. Everyone felt comfortable that they had them with them. I had mine in the office. I actually, once she started going through it, I bought it up from the SQL website and I followed it through. Uh, point by point and the reason I did that was because I noticed when Patricia was Trish was sitting there Going through all the questions of all the quality areas. She was going straight down the middle now that was meeting I wasn't happy with that. I wanted to go through the exceeding side So I bought them up and she would read out what we you know what she wanted to see and I would go straight over to exceeding and I would use the words in the exceeding column to ensure that she understood what we were in fact doing and it was exceeding, and it is written there, so I used the words that she was aware of, that she had in front of her, so hopefully she could put us into the exceeding box in most all areas. What we're going to get, I don't know. We are quietly confident we will at least get meeting. Exceeding would be wonderful, but I know that is almost impossible. But we do want to certainly reach the meeting at the very least. Oh, the other point that I did want to make as well is that ensure all of your staff and children wear hats and if the children take their hat off, bring them into the shade, pop it back on. But I will say I probably blew that one because I was so vigilant in everyone wearing hats, I went in and out a few times and of course I walked out at one stage without my hat on. And my husband came over to me when I'm going, uh, uh, hat, uh, hat, the child, you've got to watch the hats. And he came over and he said, sweetheart, yours isn't on. It's like, oh my God, I've just let the whole team down. So I don't know how badly that will reflect, but just something as small as that can have an overall effect on your assessment. So I'll cop that on the chin. I blew that one. Uh, I think it's the only thing during the day that it really was a problem with, and it was my problem. So uh, I did apologize to my staff and shouted them all a drink for that because uh, that was my error. So please, if you are a director and don't normally go into the rooms and, and supervise outside, please remember every time you go out or even leave the hat on your head for the day if you're going to be going in and out speaking to the assessors. That's the last thing I think I can say. So all of those people that are about to go through it, good luck. I hope you get assessors that are fair and reasonable, and I have heard of them that don't listen to you and don't ask questions and aren't interested in you explaining what you do and the reasons why. But hopefully the assessors are getting better at their job, becoming more proficient at what they do, and certainly more professional in all areas of their role. So as long as that continues to improve and their quality improvement program continues on the way that ours certainly are for all centres, then we may end up having a reasonably good um, assessment process that of course remains to be seen but um, fingers crossed good luck to you all and I will let you all know via the Facebook page when our assessment comes through in weeks to come thank you